Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Adam with Retro Repairs and today I've got a Dreamcast. So we're going to get this cracked open and uh, I'm going to show you how to repair a fairly common issue with these. Um, so with this one, if you uh, watched my video a little while ago where I opened up a bunch of mail, uh, this came in one of the packages. So I ended up getting this on eBay, came with four controllers and the console itself altogether. I think it cost me something like 15 or $10, something ridiculously cheap. Um, even if one of those controllers works, I mean, that's breaking even to me. If I can make this work, that should be, it's a great buy in my opinion. Now, the issue with this, it works seemingly fine. Um, I can turn it on, it will read a disc, but I cannot get a controller to work. No controller that I put in any of these ports, just, it doesn't work. So, um, what's the issue with that? Well, it's actually something fairly simple. It's a little bit beyond cleaning, so it's not a matter of grabbing your brush and cleaning out the ports or cleaning up the controller, but there's a couple of fuses in here that need to be replaced. Um, fuse and a resistor which caused this whole control board to stop working. So today I'm going to open that up. I'm going to show you exactly what the problem is and how to go about fixing that. So let's get started with this and uh, we start just like every other console from the bottom. So the Dreamcast is kind of a, it's kind of a cool little machine here uh, for a number of reasons and one of them is this is one of the first home consoles that came built in with its own network adapter. So um, I mean, as you can see, that's a phone jack, so it's meant for dial-up internet, but it had a modem built into the console. It comes out of the box like that. Most other machines at this time either didn't support network connectivity or was something so obscure that it only worked in certain parts of Japan or something like that, like some, uh, like I think the, the Sega Saturn supported network connectivity, but very limited. Um, the Genesis actually had a network modem, but again, something that was extremely limited. And uh, I believe the something else had network connectivity, which was very limited at the time. So this was one of the first uh, home consoles that really came out of the box with that modem. So um, having said that, that's going to be the first thing that we remove. And that just pops right out. So it'll have to be removed in order to get access to all the screws you need. So... This console, like all Segas, it has four Phillips screws, so you don't need any uh, fancy game bit or security bits in order to open it like you do Nintendos. Um, Sega made it nice and easy for us down the road, so if you need to open it, you get a crosshead screwdriver and you open it. It's not that difficult. So we have one, two, three... And four. So if you watched any of my previous videos where I uh, took a look at those Saturns, um, the Dreamcast is actually going to be very similar in build and components to the Saturn. Obviously it uses different stuff, but the general design is fairly similar, just the way it looks. So we'll open it up and show you what, it, what I mean. So the lid is off here, and this is what we've got. So just like the Sega Saturn, you have your main power supply board on the left side. You have your laser pickup in the middle here. Um, the main circuit boards under this shielding. And this is actually what it is that we're gonna look at. And this is the control board for the uh, controller ports. So we need to get this out. We really don't care about any of the rest of it. So I mean, the uh, I believe I can leave the uh, power supply board in place, the laser in place. I'm not having any issues with reading discs. It's only the controller ports, so this should hopefully be a pretty minor fix. Um, also worth noting, while you're doing this, it's a good idea to replace this battery. Now this battery hosts um, some of the system files, so I believe it stores your date and time, or that might be on the VMU, I'm not positive. But, I mean, this thing's probably, let's see if it says when it was manufactured. Uh, I don't see it offhand here, but... I mean, probably early 2000s, maybe 2000, right there. So this thing's 17 years old. Batteries generally don't last 17 years, so it's not a bad idea to replace that. Having said that, they have a very uh, proprietary format, so unless you order one online, you're not going to find an easy, just swappable battery. So 
There are many guides online on how to switch the batteries. I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but, uh, and I don't have a battery here to replace it with, so I'm not even gonna do it today. But that may be a video for another day down the road when I order some and end up doing that repair. So for now, we're gonna remove this board here, and it consists of, I believe, just the four screws, one, two, three, four. You have a ribbon connector, and it looks like a power connector on the side here. So the ribbon connector, we need to disconnect and you just pull that straight up and uh, hook it off to the side now the controller ports or the controller port board should just lift straight up now and you just unhook it from the front face and it will lift right up like that and this uh, power connector here you should be able to just pull there we go and now that's disconnected. So this is the board that we're going to be working on. I'm going to take those four screws and set them aside as I don't really want to lose them. And I'm going to grab my components that I need to replace on here and we'll be back in a moment. All right, so this is the board that we have here and the part that I'm going to replace is this one right here. So this is a fusible resistor. Um, and this is the most common culprit for causing a, uh, a controller board to stop working. So I'm going to pull it and we're just going to replace it with a quarter watt 10 ohm fuse. So they don't really make fusible resistors anymore. Or not fuse, sorry, resistor. They don't really make fusible resistors anymore. So it's impossible, near impossible to find a suitable replacement part. Um, this will work and it will... Uh, solve that issue for me. So what you need to do to start is you can do this either before or after you desolder the old part but you're going to bend the leads to approximately match how this was set up and uh, you can still have time to play with it a little bit after. Now what I need to do here is desolder the uh, the part from the board here. So it's a pretty simple process here. In order to do that you need your desoldering wick and of course, you need your soldering iron. If you have a desoldering pump, that makes it even easier. But I'm gonna show you quickly how we go about desoldering parts off the board. So to test that the iron is warm enough, um, I hit it with a little bit, of, little bit of solder here just to tin the tip and it instantly melts on contact. So that should be sufficient. Um, and I'm just gonna warm up these little solder blobs here. So first one, and the second one, just to make sure that the uh, solder is flowing nicely. Now, I'm going to come at it with this desoldering braid. So all you really do, you lay the braid on top of the part. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit better for you. Now it's as in as it goes. But you put the braid on top of the part you want to desolder, and then just heat it up from above. So you do have to be careful as when you hold on to the soldering braid, it does get quite warm. So you may burn yourself, but what it will do here, the solder will actually wick up into the soldering wick right there is that shiny part is the actual solder and take it away from the board. So we'll do that to the other one now. And we should be pretty close to good. So with using a desoldering wick, um, you usually do have to play with it a little bit because it's never going to be perfect. Like I can't just pull that part out right now, although it is actually not bad. I'm just going to see if I can get you a bit of a better view here. So this is right here, the parts that I just desoldered. And as you can see, there is a bit of a hole in between the leads and the pads there. So it actually didn't do too bad of a job. I bet you if I try and grab it with tweezers, I may even be able to break any residual solder there. Yeah, oh yeah, just like that. So that's completely loose. And this one here is also loose. What do you know, the part just fell right out. So like I said, desoldering doesn't have to be difficult. It does take a little bit of practice. So now, we're going to put in the replacement parts. So um, let's focus it here again. So again, I've bent it in place to roughly go. 
So all you do, you run it through the existing holes. And then once you have it approximately where you want it, all you need to do is bend the leads out at a 90 degree angle, and that holds it into place. Now, we're gonna grab our solder, gonna grab the soldering iron, and all you do, place the soldering iron there, a little bit of solder, There's one, and there's two. Might be a bit too much solder, but that's not a bad thing. So, we'll give it about 10, 15 seconds to cool, but now we have replacement soldered on parts. That uh, resistor isn't going anywhere. And using my side cutters, we just trim the, the rest of the leg off. So, that's it. That part's been repaired. Um, so I'm going to clean up some of this stuff here and we'll move on. So now that the uh, component's been replaced, um, all we have to do is reassemble this and we do that in the reverse order of how we disassembled. So I'm going to start with this little power connector here. The reason I like to start with this is because uh, there's not much slack so once it's in place it's difficult to get your finger in and uh, get the pressure to get it into place. So while I can move and angle the board, I'm gonna plug that in. And it looks like this actually connects just to the fan. So um, it more, it's more of just a pass through of power. So I'm gonna line up the board approximately where it should go, just like that. We're gonna plug in that ribbon connector. And the important thing is to make sure that it's solidly connected on both sides. So it also connects to the board on the bottom. So make sure that's in place and it's in place here. So before I go too much further, I wanna test this before I start screwing everything together because if something still doesn't work, we're gonna to need to unscrew everything and uh, f figure out what the issue is. So I'm going to hook everything up and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I have everything hooked up right now. Uh, I've got the power, got the AV hooked up. I've got it set up on my TV. So I think it's time to see if it actually works. So one important thing, um, you know what I have the power cord hooked in and everything's open here? It's extremely important that you are very careful around this power supply. Um, this is unregulated, unreduced, 110 volts AC coming right from my wall. If I touch the wrong part, that 110 volts, 15 amps is gonna go right into my body and that's enough to kill someone. So again, very careful when you're playing around with this open. Um, that includes when you're plugging it in and unplugging it. It's very tempting to just grab it and use that uh, force to push it in. You just don't do that. It'll end up poorly. So let's try the power and see what we've got. So I have power coming through on my VMU. The uh, screen just turned black. I'm going to turn it off for a second and try it. There we go. Got the sad panda. So date time and the controller works. So... Um, Next step, since I didn't have an opportunity to get past that, we're going to grab a disc and see if it works with a disc, so make sure that we're actually reading something. So I'm going to grab a disc and uh, we'll be back in a moment. All right, so I've grabbed two discs here, and uh, one of them's an original Dreamcast disc, so we're going to plug this in and see if it works. Now I think I'm going to have to hold this down. Yep. So please wait while disc is being checked. So it looks like it's reading. I'm gonna hit play on my controller. Oops, press the wrong one here. I'm gonna highlight play. Please insert a game disc so it's not reading. So that's gonna be another issue I'm gonna to have to look at because it's not actually reading the disc. Let's try it again just in case. So one more time, we'll hit the play button on the controller. Please insert game disc. So something was going on with the laser, which is not reading the disc. So um, evidently this is something that will involve a little bit more work. I'm gonna try it once more with a burn disc though, because I wanna see if that will make any type of difference. 
perhaps it's a bad disc. So here we have a backup copy of Sonic Adventure 2. And same thing. Let's press that, get it spinning. So it says, please wait while disc is being checked. And again, it's still spinning the same way, so I suspect it's not going to read. I stand corrected. It looks like we might be uh, back in action here. So it could be that something was going on with my Tony Hawk Pro Skater disc that wasn't letting it be read, but Sonic Adventure 2 seems to be no problem. And currently we are booting up into the game. There we go, presented by Sega. So I'm going to try Tony Hawk Pro Skater once again. Let's turn this off and start it as if I'm booting up the console from scratch. So I'll throw that back in the game. If you're wondering um, where I got this case from, it's just a Wii case, so from any Wii game that you have, hence the white DVD case, and the label, just grab it off the internet, you can print it out in color, looks way better on the shelf, so there's an example of some of the Dreamcast games I have, looks way better on the shelf than just having loose discs floating everywhere. Same with those Sega CD games, um, those are backups. And you can do the same thing with really anything. Um, so it's a great way to kind of just make your collection look better than just having discs floating around getting damaged. So let's try, give this a little bit of a clean, but let's try Tony Hawk Pro Skater one more time. So power on. Let's see what, get on the VMU. So we have our sad panda. Play. Oops. Still, please insert game. Di oh, of course. So, rookie mistake. I have to hold this down when I power it on. Otherwise, the disc won't spin. So, let's see what we have here. So still the same kind of issue. Please insert game disc. So it doesn't seem to like actual Dreamcast game for some reason. Um, I'm going to grab another game and we'll see if it's maybe just this one. Okay, so I think the best way to uh, see if it's maybe just this one particular specific disc is replace Tony Hawk Pro Skater with Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Yes, I have two of them for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but... That's just the way it works. So, power on. VMU is flashing. Disc is spinning. And we are booting up into the OS. So let's see what happens here. Date and time. So, choose the date and time. And there we go, we're booting right into the game. So something about that one specific disc just wasn't uh, console wasn't having any of it. So that's good enough for me. Um, time to reassemble this thing completely and just make sure everything works the way it should. So we'll disconnect everything, take the disc out, get rid of any built up power stored in these capacitors and it's reassembly time. So to get this put back together, first thing you're gonna use is are those four um, brass screws. So those screws are going to go right in beside the controller ports here. So one right there. One right here. One right here. And last one goes there. So all the internals have been reassembled. Um, so what we're going to do now, let's throw the top of the casing back on. And I guess it looks like we have to be kind of careful not to 
something's catching here and I'm not exactly, there we go. So throw it on with the door open. That way that the uh, door closed switch is being activated properly. And then for the back, we're gonna use these four black screws that we had removed previously. So once again, one in each corner and it will be good to go. So there's one, two, three, and four. Last part is going to be this uh, network adapter. So all it does it snaps into the side and this is good to go. So I'm going to reconnect everything, get the power, get the AV hooked back up again. So AV, power, and my controller. And we just want to make sure that it works properly once I put the cover on that uh, I haven't shorted anything, I haven't caused any issues, maybe that door open switch isn't working properly. So we're going to try it with Sonic Adventure, power on, we have the LED flashing on the VMU, and we're booting up into Dreamcast. We have to choose the date and time. And this is what that battery I was talking to you about would actually store. So you replace the battery and you don't have to keep doing this every time you disconnect the power. Please insert game disc. Why don't you like me? So I think, um, you notice it doesn't start spinning. I think when I reassembled it, I didn't quite get the uh, that switch that detects if the door is closed done properly. So, well, that was moving a little bit. Let's try it again. No, it's not. So we're gonna have to disassemble it again and double check that switch. So, let's do that right. Okay. Now. So the four screws are removed. So let's lift the top off and see what the problem is. So I'm suspecting when I put the top on, this switch wasn't being activated properly right here. And this is what tells it that the door is closed. So when we open this, you see this is the part here that moves. And when it closes, it's supposed to push down on this switch. And I'm guessing for whatever reason, that wasn't happening. So um, let's just try, put it back on just going straight down and let's see what happens when we close a door so we'll plug it in put in a disc it doesn't really matter which disc and hit the power disc was spinning so that's a good sign Perfect, so let's get the AV and uh, make sure that this is actually working properly. And once we've verified that it works properly, then we will uh, actually screw it together and consider this done. So there we have our Panda and we'll set the date and time, set, and it's booting right into the game, perfect. So. That's ready to be screwed back together, and otherwise, this seems to be a fully functional system. So I'm gonna test this for a little bit. I wanna make sure that it will actually work um, in all facets, so. We're detecting Tony Hawk Pro Skater on my VMU, and there we go. we're right into the game here. video here and yeah there we go press start and we are good to go so we've got Tony Hawk Pro Skater so um, as you can see that was a relatively easy fix uh, it only involved switching out one resistor 
and it revived the entire front of the controller ports here. So something that relatively minor soldering skill, excuse me, relatively minor soldering skill is required. Um, a little bit of desoldering, put in a new part, solder it back on. It's a fairly simple fix. Um, it's something that you want to try, I highly encourage you to give it a try. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You, not really too much, just uh, you're not really working with anything um, critical. You're not playing around with any of the processors. You're not really going to risk shorting anything as long as you follow the steps that I've kind of outlined there. So um, I hope that this video was helpful for anyone that is having the same issue that I had where the controller ports just would not work. Um, I hope if you have any issues with it, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to help if I can through comments. Uh, let me know what you think of the video overall. Um, let me know if there's anything, any problems that you've had with a system that uh, perhaps I might be able to help with or I might be able to find one and post a video about how to go about fixing it. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. That way you'll see all the new videos as soon as I post them. Thanks a lot for watching again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.